Let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Eric Standup. My passport is telling me I'm German, but I would consider myself a human, a child of this planet. I do something that everyone does. I read faces. Every one of you is a face reader. But maybe I'm a little bit more in kind of a professional work all around face reading, so I'm a trainer, I am a counselor, I am an advisor, and my advice is not based on any kind of studies, statistics, any book that I've read. My advice is based on the face of my client. So it's an insight of this person, and I am able to read that and give him the insight of his inner self, of his inner truth. All of you are face readers, and all of you can do what I do, and most of you do what I do, but you might call it intuition or empathy, or you call it life experience. I'm not a morning person. I'm not an early bird. So Wake Up Call was exactly the right title for this uh, kind of session here. I think it's the earliest talk I ever had in my life. I work for organizations, I work for companies, I work for single individuals, and I work for the police. I never worked for a government. And this keeps me wonder, because especially governments should have an interest in insights of the other side that they're talking to, especially in peace talks. It would be a big help to know the other side a little bit better. Not only he's married, two kids, or he's the leader of this country for 12 years. It would be very helpful to understand the emotional side of someone or any kind of personality that might conflict the talk. Well, let's see. Maybe that will be part of the future as well. So this morning, I uh, had this wake-up call, and I looked my, myself in the mirror, and I was like, ooh, Eric. You have to wake up. You have to have a coffee. Because you want to introduce the universal language that we all speak. And I want to train you a little bit, not only to speak this language, but also to learn a little bit, read it, and then maybe use it later on when you go out and read yourself a little bit. This time by conscious, not only by subconscious. Imagine, 30,000 years ago, languages started on the planet. Before that, we had a period of 270,000 years without any language. And a lot of people say language is essential for civilization, for development. And that is true. But language can be also a barrier. Language sometimes is disconnecting. Because language sometimes means something different in this culture or that culture. But there is one thing that connects us all. And that's the language of the face because we all act the same kind of way in our face than anyone anywhere on this planet. Everyone has the same micro-expressions in his face than maybe the Wall Street guy or the native in Borneo. Everyone acts the same under the same circumstances, under the same emotions, expectations, feelings. And this is what I want to tell you and want to make you aware of it. Look a little bit more on the facial expression of someone. Look a little bit more into the face of someone to find out what's going on in this person. Maybe I can help him. Maybe I can balance this person. Maybe I find an inner truth that will help me. The Homo sapiens started 300,000 years ago to populate the planet. And it took him 270,000 years to develop language. From those days, we developed something different. We learned to compare faces. And we have a small size of a hazelnut in our brain that has no other job to do than comparing faces. That's why we can say, oh, you don't look good. What's going on? Oh, she looks happy. I don't like her. I don't know why, but something's wrong here. That comes from those ties. And it's a very good compass. It's a big help to understand people a lot better than maybe languages can do. If you see something like that anywhere on the planet, 
99.9% .9 of the people will tell, oh, a face, a happy face. Nobody's telling you it's a plate, two peas, and a cucumber. I once had a talk in a software company, and I thought I'm clever, because nobody knew that I'm a face reader, and I thought I'm clever, and I deleted the eyes and just put the mouth on it and asked, what do you see? Nobody said it's a face without eyes and nose. Everybody showed up with something different. One even said, oh, it's an off button from the remote control. Well, software company. One thing we learn out of that is eyes and mouth are the most important thing in our face, are the most important features in our face. Eyes and mouth. This morning, when I was in my, in my shower cabin, I even painted a, a smiley on the, on, the, on the glass wall. And a lot of people do that. I just uh, experienced that on a beach in Borneo, that a native just did that on the beach. It's an international sign. Eyes and mouth overrule everything is what we are saying in face reading. Why is that? Because eyes and mouth are directly connected with your brain via the facial nerve. So whatever you think, whatever you feel, whatever you expect, whatever runs through your head can be written in the face, especially on eyes and mouth. Especially on eyes and mouth. And that's why 85% of the people have an eye contact when they meet each other. 10% are more interested in the mouth and they would look on your mouth. And there's always some strange people, 5%. They are more interested in the nose or in the ears, or they would look on your shoulder. They would not look you into the face. Eyes and mouth can give you so many information, endless. And this is what I want to teach you a little bit here as well. You have 43 muscles in your face. And the ones who are most flexible are the ones around your eyes and your mouth. Whatever happens to you, eyes and mouth change quickly, in between a tenth of a second. And it takes you five seconds to formulize a, a thought, to make a thought possible, to, to realize the thought. It will take you five seconds. It will take you a tenth of a second to show in the face. And that's why we have TV series like The Mentalist. The Mentalist is maybe not so much a mentalist. He is maybe a face reader, because he can already read what you haven't even thought of. He has five seconds in front of you, because your face was quicker. What can you read in, a, in an eye? Well, the color. <laughs> well, to be honest, it's nice to know the eye color of someone, but it's not really helpful in terms of a face reading. Maybe you can find out by the eye color what is the cultural background of someone, but that's, even that is not so easy. But what you can read in the eye is the emotional status, expectation. Is someone sharp-eyed or is someone dreaming at the moment? Is someone taking part in the conversation or not? And therefore, the pupils are very essential because the pupils are directly connected with your nerve system. And the change of the pupils tell a lot about your status. And you cannot fake the pupils. It's impossible. I mean, you can influence them. For example, when someone is drinking a lot of alcohol, it's very likely that the pupils get big. And if someone is a sharp thinker, stimulates himself even with coffee, the pupils get very often very small. So we have drugs like coffee or alcohol that make pupils bigger or smaller. But it also tells us something about the person that moment right when he sits in front of me. If someone has small pupils standing right in front of me, I know that he is now head-related. He thinks, he compares, he tries to give something a structure. And if I have someone in front of me with a big pupil, I know the nerve system is stimulated in a way that this person is now in a, in a land that deals with feelings, emotions, maybe illusions. He's more in that. When you look in kids' eyes, you will probably see 90% of the kids have big pupils most of the time, except they look maybe into the sun or they had a little bit too much of any kind of uh, sweets, for example. 
Kids have big pupils because they are very imaginative. They see things no adult will see because they want to play, and through the playing, they want to learn. So therefore, a lot of kids have big pupils. And have you ever thought yourself why the teddy bears that you can buy anywhere have always big pupils? Sometimes you can't even see an iris. It's just pupil. Because if you try to sell a teddy bear with a small pupil, you will not sell that to the kids. They like the ones with the big pupils. Why is that? Well, that goes back to baby mother. When the mother looks on her kid, she will not so much be in her head like, oh, how does that kid look like? It's more like, oh, my baby. It's my son, my daughter. And her pupils get big. And the kid is realizing this. And the older the kid gets, the kid wants to have someone in front with big pupils because it reminds on those days when mom looked on the baby. How to get big pupils? Very often, just to make a step out of the thoughts, make a step out of too much comparing. And when I work for the police, for example, I very often look on signs like that, on big pupils, because then I know the maybe criminal or maybe not is now not so much in his head, he's more in emotions. So if I have someone in front of me who has always small pupils, and out of the blue now the pupils get big, then I know, oh, I hit him somewhere very emotional. Well, that works in love life as well. So the big pupils is a big helper. And that's why the police checks you when you drive with the car, and they want to know, hey, did you use drugs? Have you drunken something? They will stimulate your pupils with the light to find out, aha, uh -huh. Drank something or not? Because when the pupils get smaller, everything is okay. When the pupils stay large, it means, okay, this person is under the influence of any, maybe, drug or alcohol. You can read a lot more in the pupils, the size and so on, but maybe I'll explain you it in a, in a different kind of story. Two years ago, in, in my office in Hong Kong, someone came. And usually I, I want to have an email in front, like, I want to come for a reading, for a private session, and please you tell me about my health, or my nutrition, or about my talents, or about my path of life. What can I do? What can I do to self-develop more? This guy didn't write anything. Maybe he was stressed, I don't know, but he showed up right in front of my door. And he said, Mr. Standup, sorry, I haven't written an email. Um, I know it's important for you, but uh, hopefully it's okay. Maybe you already know what's it about, why I'm here. Well, I'm not a mind reader, but funny enough, I had a golden moment. Sometimes face readers have that. And the golden moment was like, yeah, I know why you're here. I think I know you're here. Because you have this terrible pain on the left side in your shoulder. And he looked at me and said, that's scary. How can you know that? Someone told you, or you've read my mind. I said, no, it's very easy to understand how that works. And he said, how? And I said, on the right side of your face, of your eyes, you have small pupils. On the left side, you have big ones, small, big. So I know that you are a thinker because you are the leader of a big company. So I know that usually you have smaller pupils, but on your left side you have a big one. The nerve system of yours stimulates the left side very, very much. And when the left side is that much stimulated and the right side not, it might be from a pain. Because when we have a lot of pain, we are not good in thinking. Give me the pill. Oh, just give me a pill. And because of some other features in the face that I'm not talking about now because I only have 30 minutes left, you could see that he had a lot of tension in the back. And by watching, observing a little bit the way how he stood, you could also see that the left side of the shoulder was affected by it. And that is sometimes so easy to explain and how it works with the face reading. How can you use it? If you have a meeting, if you have an interview with someone, just look in the eyes, and when you see someone with big pupils, you know, hey, I should describe things in more, in pictures. Don't be so much fact-based, because then you give a balance to this person. I understand you, I know where you're from. I describe a lot more in colorful pictures. 
When you have someone with small pupils right in front of you, this will be a person who is much head-related and then describe things more in statistics, numbers, and so on. And when you look at me, I don't know if you can see that, I have very small pupils. So the face reader that I am is not someone who does, who I uh, can see, I feel, something like that. No, I'm a very analytical person. Pupils can have a different size, eye colors as well. And I don't know if any one of you is a dog owner, but they usually say, oh, a dog with two eyes is not so easy to handle because they are very nervous. They have uh, a very easily stimulated nerve system. And it's the same with people. We are not different. We are still biologically animals. When you look at this, uh, I think it's a young man's face. When you look at his face, you also see that the white part of the sclera Below shows up, and that's uncommon. Usually, the iris hits below as well. And you can see that because of a different health status of this person. When the iris moves on top, it means this person is exhausted. And that person, the moment we took a picture of him, was exhausted. Why? Maybe he hasn't slept, maybe he took part in a marathon, Maybe he's exhausted for more than two years because he might have a disease. This we will not find out by just the eyes, but we will find out a lot about it. So this is one thing that you can see when you look on the sclera. And everybody knows of you when the white part of the eyes are a little bit reddish, shows veins and vessels. Well, that might be an allergy or shampoo in the eyes or any kind of disease. Because the eyes tell you a lot about your health. It also tells you about your emotions and feelings. And that's why every culture on this planet has the saying, the eyes are the window of the soul. Or the eyes are the window of the heart. Or the eyes connect the heart with the feelings. It's very interesting that every culture says that. When I was in China and I said to uh, one of the Chinese guests that I had, yeah, the eyes are the window of the soul. And he said, yeah, Confucius said that. I said, oh yeah, uh, I heard that in South America as well from someone, but then it was someone else. So it's a wisdom of man time. It's a wisdom of everyone. Are the eyes the window of the soul? Maybe. I don't want to quote that. But the eyes are definitely the window of your brain because eyes are connected via the visual nerve with your brain. So whatever you have inside here, the eyes tell about it. And you can learn that. It's so easy. What I teach in face reading is not something brand new. It's what people have inside. So it's easy to find out what is going on in someone by reading just eyes. And the best thing that you can say to someone, oh, your eyes shine like stars. You have shiny eyes, glam is in your eyes. I love your eyes because they, they're like suns and stars. And the worst thing that you can say to someone is not a curse or any bad word. The worst thing that you can say to someone is, oh, your eyes don't shine anymore. I mean, don't tell that a policeman. I think he will not uh, deal with it. Like, what? What do you mean? But um, if you say someone that you know your eyes don't shine anymore, that really hurts. And why is that? Because when we're young, eyes still shine. And when we meet a very old person, like maybe 80, and the eyes still shine, this person appears very young. And why is that? Because inside the brain of this person, there is still a lot of activity, Extra a lot of activity. This person is happy. This person wants to still change things, create things, wants to be connected to people. And we all know when we, when we have a flu or when we are not in a good mood, eyes do not shine. They're a little bit shady, a little bit foggy. But that can change in between two or three days. But if eyes do no longer shine, that is not a good thing. Those are sad eyes from India and from uh, another part of Asia. Sad eyes is something that we all should be aware of. And it's just humanitarian. It just gives us a good feeling if we try to dry sad eyes help people to have a shine in their smile again, help people to be happy again, change their face. You all know the sentence, the smile that you send out comes back to you. 
Well, I tested this on Wall Street a few weeks ago. It's not always working. So I walked on Wall Street like this, and they thought I'm a little bit crazy. But it works definitely in the family. It works definitely in a talk. So the smile that you send out can stimulate the other side. Also the yawning, by the way. Little secret. When my family reunions take a little bit too long, and I want to stop it, I do very often this. Because this you send out, another one gets tired as well. We have a lot of empathy inside of us. And when we stimulate our empathy, we connect with other people. So it makes no sense to hide our face. Shakespeare once said, God has given you a face, and you make yourself another. Why? The face is here to communicate with others, not to hide something. We have six billion people on the planet, and everyone has a different face. Statistically, that's almost impossible. Even if you look on twins, there are significant differences, even identical twins. One might have a mall here, the other one not, just for example. Because <laughs> you develop your face from the way you live, from the way you experience, from the way what you think, what you eat, what you drink. Whatever happens in your life might change your face, sometimes only for a second, sometimes a lifelong. You might be the most happiest person, and then you get a phone call, and the phone call is so sad that it changes your face in a second, and it will not change again in your life. Could happen. I don't wish you. So eyes tell a lot about, about the emotional status. It tells a lot about health as well. I work in a clinic as well in Zurich, in Switzerland, and I work for doctors who do integrative medicine. I also work for a lot of psychologists because they want to have a shortcut to their client by just watching the face and find out hmm, what's going on inside him to be more closer to their patient or client. When, if you look on the face of those two, I think none of you would say, oh, they're very healthy people, very healthy. All of you would say, oh, maybe not so good. And it's true if you, for example, look on the face of the, the man's eyes here, you already see he has small pupils. From what we learned, we know he's a thinker. And then we see this, well, almost violet coloration below the eyes. And the skull of us has a big hole. And when we have a swelling here, or anything whitish, a discoloration, or a coloration like this, which is more violet, not black, not gray, then we know this person is under the influence of anything that goes on in his system. He produced a lot of cortisol and adrenaline out of stress and out of self-destruction. So when I look in his face, I know he is on a trip of self-destruction. Inner thoughts are almost killing him. So a good advice is please go to a psychotherapist, take care of your mental health. He already might knew that, but when you look at him and you don't know him and you tell him this, I can see you cannot sleep at night, you doubt everything, you have big problems, then he's surprised and I tell them, yeah, it's the face telling us. When you look on the woman next to him, he has also a little bit of coloration like that, but I don't know if you can see it quite proper. She has light white dots around the eyes. It's a sign of a problem with the liver. She has a fat liver and she has also some other signs over here. It's a sign of the kidneys. Furthermore, in the face, you can see that she has thyroid problems, but that's another thing. We are not talking about that. The face wants to give us so much help, and a lot of people say, oh, what? What do you want with the face? Well, the face is connected with everything you have. It's connected with the organs via the nervus vagus and the nervus trigeminus. It's connected with your brain via the facial nerve, and it's connected by, with the eyes via the visual nerve. And we have five senses, scientifically approved. Maybe we have more. But we have five senses. Guess where they are? To see, to smell, to taste, to listen, and now even to feel. When life starts, we feel with the mouth because babies are not able to grab everything. So they put everything in the mouth, and that's why I tell mothers, no, let that baby take everything in the mouth. This baby has to learn how something feels. It's very important for the development. Kids. They're more honest with their face. 
And a lot of kids are teached even to hide their face because it might be a disadvantage. It's better to hide the face. I can tell you one thing. If someone tries to hide a face, it's even easier for a face reader to read that because he has to have everything under control. When I work in Macau, I have sometimes poker players. And they say, Eric, teach me how to hide my face. No one should know my cards. And I usually say, well, I can teach you, but then you're not a good player anymore because you're so much focused on your face that you cannot focus on your card anymore. And it's the same in life. If you're focused on hiding yourself, you are not yourself anymore. You cannot deal with people anymore, not in an authentic way. And then you doubt, nobody understands me. I have no connection to someone. Why am I without success? Well, because you're not authentic. Your face has, has been given to you to talk to people. A few weeks ago, I had a professional football player. His problem was a very interesting one. He said, at the moment, I have big problems in giving interviews in front of the camera. And I said, why? You, <laughs> you do that for 10 years. Everybody knows you. It's not a big problem for you. I said, no, I, I can't do it anymore, Eric. And I went to the doctor, even the psychotherapist, and I said, so what's the problem? He said, see, after the game, when they interview, I always have eyelid twitches. And, and then that's on camera. And then everybody's talking about my eyelid, which is not about what I have to tell about the game. And I went even to the doctors, and they tell, Mr. That is just an overstimulated nerve system. You're nervous, and, um, and that's why that happens. And, and out of that box, it's not a problem for you. And he said, Eric, you know what? I'm not nervous. I really want to tell the people what I thought about the game. I'm not nervous, but my eyelid is twitching. So the doctors might be, might be, might be wrong. Or, or I do not understand myself anymore, and said, no, the doctors are right, but maybe only half of it. You have an overstimulated nerve system at that moment, but the reason is not you're nervous, the reason is you are exhausted. You are exhausted after the game, and when you're exhausted, you burn a lot of magnesium in your body. And when you burn a lot of magnesium in your body, one reaction is an overstimulated nerve system, and that goes hand in hand with eyelid twitches. So I would recommend you after the game to first have a magnesium drink or a banana or something to calm down a little bit, and then eyelid twitches will not appear in the face. And that was the simple advice that a face reader could give him at that moment. It's very simple, but sometimes truth is very simple. And the face is very simple. And the face can help us in any, any, any kind of situation. And that's why organizations or even companies hire me, because in a contract talk, you might have an opponent or the other side, or you want to get closer, or you want to, to close the deal or finish a deal. And a face reader is here to give the consultation, to give uh, a consolation, to make it happen. Kids are the ones who come very close to what we have in heart. And therefore, it's very important that we allow our kids to live their emotions in the face, not reduce them. Emotion, yes, sometimes they're driven by personal problems like anger maybe or jealousy, but most of the emotional problems are also driven by a life experience, and the face is the one who wants to show and explain what's going on. I want to give you in my face, I don't know if it's uh, visible very much, but I want to give you in my face a little bit of an example of what you feel when you deal with someone else. If someone talks to you like this, someone talks to you like that, you have definitely a different feeling than if someone talks to you like this. Why is that? Because the brain stimulates my mouth now in a different kind of way. And maybe not every one of you has the same feeling, but if I talk like this, you might feel a lot of tension. You might feel that this person is a little bit picky. Why? I don't understand this. It's because he thinks this way, and the mouth shows. And then we, when we have a conversation with this person, we might be able to open him up with a gesture. Or we just understand, OK, this person is a little bit picky, and I the way I deal with him, take care of that, and will not try to be offensive. Um, I just want to make him comfortable. Well, you can use it in a different kind of way as well, but uh, I would recommend this one. 
The mouth, therefore, is also telling us a lot of things. I just spoke with one of the ladies when I came in the room here, and I see them standing at the wall, and one of the ladies, she showed gums when she was talking and laughing. Well, a lot of people do that, but not so many, maybe 5%. She showed gums. What does that mean? Well, the nerve system of hers, her brain, is overstimulating the muscles of the mouth all around. What does that mean? It means that she's a giver. She wants to give more. She has the belief system of the giver. I want to help. I want to support. I want to be there for others. And that is subconsciously happening. And that's why we love uh, the smile of maybe Julia Roberts, who goes from left ear lip to, 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 to the right one. Because it's a very inviting one. We, we feel brilliant when we have that. Face reading is a technique that all of you can do. All of you are face readers. And I want you to be aware of it and not hide it. You can even just read the eyes of someone who's right in front of you. And you've learned a lot of tools when you have been a kid. You learned a lot of tools when you listened to grandma and grandpa because they had life experience and they very often told you, hey, if you meet someone who does this and that, mm, better look up on here and there. You can also read a face by gestures. How can I read a face by gestures? Because exactly when the hand meets the face, it's a very honest gesture. Body language is not an honest gesture. A lot of people tell us, read books about body language. Well, body language is helpful, but you know, body language you can learn easily. And I tell you, a lot of politicians learn body language. Company owners as well. And body language is driven by the culture as well. Body language is also driven by an individual personality. The face movement is not driven by the culture. The way we move our facial muscles we all have the same. All of us on the planet have 43 muscles in our face. All of us have a nerve system that connects the muscles with the brain. And we do it subconsciously. And the same is when we move from the hand to the face. Because in all cultures, it's said, don't touch your face with the hand. Maybe it goes back to ancient times when we had a lot of dirt in our hand. We were out in the wilderness, and it was not healthy to do that. But when people touch their face with the hand, it gives you a strong, idea of what's going on inside this person. For example, when I do interviews with the police and we have a criminal in front of us, and out of the blue this person does this, just for a quick moment, then I know, oh, he needs more space. He needs more breath. His nerve system stimulates him to say, oh, I want to get out of here. For me, it's a sign, oh, we might have him right now in a corner. We should insist on what's going on here. I once was in Switzerland in a TV show, and the, the person who guided through the TV show, very, very nice person, was good in gestures, but a lot body language with it as well. We talked and talked, and he said at one point, Eric, tell me about my health. And I said, you know what? I don't want to talk about your health. It's 10 o'clock evening. You have makeup on your face. I cannot see coloration. I cannot see glam. I cannot see shade. I can't see anything of that. But let's talk about your personality a little bit, because you know yourself, and maybe the people do not know you. And he said, oh, that's a good idea. And I said, OK, here we go. And I told him 10, 15 things, and he was happy about it. And the people laughed. It was a nice atmosphere. At one point, I was so much in my face reading that I said, oh, and I can see you tend to extremes, especially in love life. <clears throat> and in my head was like, oh, Eric, you should better shut up now. We're on TV. And he said to me, and I said, in love life, and then I said, excuse me, I said, um, but we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Sorry. And he said, oh, yes, we want to talk about that. That's interesting. Tell me. So he told me something that his gesture didn't mean. So he said, Shut up. But he said, oh, yes, let, I want to know. And that was a good sign that the head of his wanted to know. But his subconscious warned him, no, we're not talking about this now. So I followed his gesture. The hand meets the face. I didn't follow his words. That's what I want to tell you as well. Sometimes words might tell you something, but please take a look on the face if the words go accordingly to what the facial expression is doing. You all know that when we ask someone, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. 
I'm, I'm really good. Well, we all know, well, then that's not the truth. Well, we do not insist then and ask no further because we know if we really insist on, we might get a list of problems that this person has and maybe we don't want to know that. I'm doing face reading for 13 years. In my second or third year, I was at a speech, a speech in uh, Hong Kong. And my those days master was standing in front of a crowd like this, a little bit more, and it took a while till everybody was sitting down. And at one point he said, oh, thank you for coming. It will take another five minutes. And uh, in those five minutes, we do the following. Everybody is grabbing the lower lip and massaging the lower lip. And I looked at my master and thought, what, what does he want to do here? But everybody did. And you know that gesture, maybe you have seen that. Hand meets the face and someone is massaging his lip. Some do it with teeth. So some do it this way. After five minutes, almost five minutes, he said, thank you, we make a break now. And the whole talk just started, but he already did a break. And some people looked at each other, what's going on here? And a third of the people attending the talk, they knew why, because they went outside and went to the restroom. You know foot massage, you know hand massage. You can also massage the face, because the face is connected by the nerve system with your organs. And the interesting thing is, if you massage your lower lip, you massage your colon. And if you compare that with life, it means when you do that, you want to get rid of something. When you stand in front of the mirror or you stand somewhere on the street and you do that, you're not thinking about, oh, I love her more than ever, or do I buy the Ferrari? It's more like, do you think, how can I solve this problem? How do I get rid of this? It's bothering me. There should be a solution. By reading this, you already know about the emotional status of this person. And that is what you really should look at. A lot of people think when you get old, eyes do not shine anymore. The mouth gets small, loses blood. Oh, it's just a misery when you get old. And that is not true. How you appear, how young you look, is not related to lines in your face. It's not related to any feature that is related to youth. It's your appearance. And if your head is working, if your head is imaginative, if you have good intentions, if your heart is warm, it shows in the face, like in this face of uh, a person from Northern Africa. She's a very, very old lady. But she still keeps this shining in her eyes and she still has this mouth that smiles and she has just a nice appearance. Everybody loves that lady. Her face is definitely signed by age and by the things that she experienced. But sometimes even a young person can look very old. And I'll show you in my face now. When you meet someone on the street, maybe this person is 24 and this person looks like this. This person appears old. Why? because there's not a lot of muscle movement. Why is no muscle movement? Well, because not a lot of things are going on in the head. Not imaginative, just bored, or maybe has only one single smile, uh, one single thought in the head. And that's why it's so important that we move our muscles in the face and express things. I had students in, in, uh, in where was that? Oh, in, in, in California, I had students and they, they said, Eric, stop, stop making jokes. I, I have to laugh then, and then I create lines in my face. <laughs> wow, wow, that's bad, yeah. No, it's good. The lines in your face, the laughter lines, show that you are a positive personality, that you are not a ghost, that you not have everything under control, that you are authentic, that you are reliable. That is very, very important. A little tip on this side. Every line that has been created on top of the eyes, on your forehead, are lines that deal with your personality, the way you think, because that part is very much close to your brain. While lines here, they are more related to your health or to your age. So it's very interesting that some people cancel the lines on the forehead. That means I don't want to talk about my personality here or my age. It's okay, everyone can do that. I just want to remind you, maybe it's a good idea not to do it. 
The lady we will see here is in her late 80s, and she is the good ghost of the village. Everybody loves her because she's carrying so much life experience with her, and she wants to share it. She's not only sharing words. While she's talking, she shares emotion. Do it as well. Show feelings. Show what you don't like. Show what is in your heart. Connect people. The Face is a book where one writes a lifetime. That's what I'm saying always. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you experience, whatever you go through, changes your face. A few things for a moment, some other things for a lifetime. Please think of that. And even if you don't want to learn the vocabulary of the face, look more closely into the face of others. You will definitely have an idea of this person because it's stored in your subconscious from ancient times 300,000 years ago. Thank you so much for coming.